Hey guys, it's Jason with JW Classic VW, and I'm going to take a look at a few of the things that uh, are causing some issues with the throttle cable. It's just sticking towards the front of the pedal, so I'm going to take a look at that. And then uh, with the speedo cable, from what I've read on some of the forums, it could just be a matter of oiling the cable a little bit and then oiling the uh, area where the speedo hooks up, uh, the speedo cable hooks up to the speedo itself. So stay tuned. This will be good, good info for you guys too because it, it might just be a really easy fix. So here we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, that pedal first and see where it might be sticking at. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of move my carpets out of the way. In the way of the pedal itself and take a look at the tube. And you can see I've got the classic roller pedal going on down here. So let me see if I can get you guys to position where you're not going to be in my way. All right, cool. So I'm going to take some some lithium, some of the white lithium grease I have and lube up this area right here. And I think that that will probably help out quite a bit with the pedal itself. What's happening is it's getting stuck up around here and not coming all the way back down. And that could just be that uh, the cable itself, the whole cable needs to be lubed up really good. And it could be the you know the, uh, the the springs back with the carburetors just aren't strong enough to pull the pedal all the way back every time. So it could be that too. And I, I've got a plan on that. I was gonna go by AutoZone today and see if I can get a beefier spring for my uh, my carburetors and uh, maybe come up with some sort of linkage to uh, improve that right there. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just move this all the way forward and lube up this whole area here really good, and then. You know, hopefully that'll help out some with the uh, with the uh, the pedal. So, and I'm gonna lube up down here too, and maybe even the the assembly, the the clutch and the brake a little bit. And uh, yeah, just general maintenance stuff, guys. Whenever you're dealing with your Volkswagen, you're gonna have times where you're gonna have to, you know, grease it up. Okay, so I've got two different types of the white lithium grease. I've got the uh, Lucas like the cream kind that I'll use that to, for the cable and then I've got this spray on white lithium grease that uh, I'm gonna use for the pedal assembly itself down in here that stuff's fumey I'll just spray everything there we go Let's work the pedals a little bit. I'm gonna take a rag here in a second and clean off some of the residue. Cause I'm just really trying to get down in, down and around the, uh, the inside of the joint some. All right, got a rag and clean off some of this residue all it's gonna do is just collect a whole lot of dirt if you don't clean up around your pedals so ooh, shiny <laughs> all right and now for the cable itself I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of stuff some of this uh, white lithium this white lithium uh, grease down inside of there some Some of this you won't see because, you know, the carpet covers it up anyway, but if I can get this down in here some, maybe it'll help with everything moving easier. All right, this should be good. Now I'm gonna move to the Speedo cable and uh, mess around with that after I get the carpet back in, so. That's the thing with these old cars, man. They just, these old ladies, these old pretty ladies, they need a, they need that attention, man. They need that love. All right, cool. A little bit of grease, a little bit of love, and uh, we should be a lot better. So let's move up underneath the, uh, underneath the hood. The, uh, take a look at that speedo cable.
So it's a brand new Speedo cable. So I don't think the cable's bad. Even though some people are like, oh, you got a bad Speedo cable. I don't think it's a bad Speedo cable. I think I just... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to send some oil down inside of there. I got some of that Marvel's Mystery Oil. And I'm just going to squirt some down inside the tube. Down inside here. And then uh, spray some uh, some lube up inside here. So. so inside my can, I got some Marvel's Mystery Oil. I always keep that in there when I'm putting my engines together. Thank you, VW Darren. He's the guy who taught me about Marvel's Mystery Oil. You guys able to see that? Probably not, huh? Mm -hmm. Oil, oil, oil. It's all filled up. Will it go down inside? <laughs> I don't know if it will or not. I think it's just, it's not going to go down inside the cable. Maybe it will. You gotta turn it, turn it, so. Alright, we'll let that kind of go down in there a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is spray some, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is cover up this area really good. I'm gonna spray some PB Blaster up inside here. I think that that's all I'm really gonna do. We'll see if that makes any difference. <laughs> Clean off the mess I made. Yeah, I rebuilt this uh, Speedo a long time ago. I didn't video that though. This is before I was doing YouTube. Let's see if we can get her up on there now. There we go. You know, we'll just see if that makes any difference, you know? I'm kind of curious too. It's like, okay, well, I'll we'll try it. Doesn't hurt to try. Well, we're underneath here. Here's my electrical stuff. You guys haven't seen it before. For those of you guys that don't know, any of you that watch the Duckman's channel, this uh, this wiper motor used to be belonged to Eleanor. I, I got it from the duck van. He's, uh, he's like, well, I'm not going to use wiper blades. If any of you guys have watched his stuff, you know that he doesn't really run wipers on his Volkswagens. But uh, I wanted it, so uh, I got it from him, and I got a little piece of Eleanor that's uh, part of Goose. So I thought that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and flip Goose around now real quick and uh, take a look at those springs. I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm, I'm, uh, i got to get to the gym, guys. got to go work out. got to get the sweat on. Like... The sweat I'm getting on right now in this garage because it's hot as freaking cramp already. <laughs> Be back in a second, guys.
So sorry about the fan noise, guys, that you're hearing in the background, but I've seen a couple different kind of spring designs out there that you can get for your carburetors. I've seen one that actually mounts to the center here, and I guess that's supposed to be pretty good too, and I might end up going to that spring eventually, but I've also seen a couple of designs where you have a, a dual spring set up right here for your carburetor, and what I really think is that this spring is just, is just too weak for what I'm trying to do here for this application. So what I'm gonna end up maybe doing is building off a little bracket over here to bring the spring to this bracket and seeing if I can pick up a different type of spring for, for now for the carburetors to help with that return. Because right now these return springs just, they're just not doing the job, man. They're not, they're not getting, uh, getting everything back where it needs to be. Hey guys, you enjoying this content? You liking what you're watching? Do me a favor. And also, if you haven't done it yet, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and enable notifications so that you can get any of future content when it comes to Goose or me or Volkswagen related. Thanks again to all the new subscribers. You guys are awesome. Wouldn't be here without you. Now, back to the video. Okay, so here's a spring kit that I was telling you guys about. This is a spring kit that you can actually get off of Amazon. They, when, you look, when you search springs or carburetor springs is what comes up. So my idea is right now just to kind of fabricate a spring that'll get the job done and I'm thinking that what I'll end up using is is this is a spring like this that's a little stiffer and this pack and the key is to open up the ends for the spring and these are still pretty weak Let's see what we can do I've got a needle nose and uh, a, sh a crap load of springs. <laughs> First thing I want to do is open up this spring right here to the way that I would need it to be, which is more like more like this. I guess straight, straighter out. This up. I'm not worried about it being too pretty because, you know, it's temporary. I'm going to find the, the spring that'll work that's right for this application here eventually. And then turn it down some. Same way on the other side. Let's open it up. That's the general idea. The spring that looks more like that, where you actually have more of the spring in the center so that you don't have the binding that I kind of have right now. All right, let's move over to the carburetor and see what we got going on here. Woo, now, <clears throat> that took a lot longer than I planned on it taking. Doesn't it always take longer than we think it's gonna take? So I adjusted the spring some, and I actually moved the hole, you know, the hole that I drilled into the uh, the new bodies for my carburetor mounts, with the carburetor filter mounts. I moved the hole over a little bit. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so first thing I did was, I'm not doing the dual spring because it just wasn't going to work. So here's the hole. I moved it over. I think that gives me a little bit better uh, return on the actual spring itself. And then I went ahead and... This area right here, it really didn't need to be elongated as much on this side because the adjustment for the uh, the flap, my uh, my flap on my carburetor, it's it's not really rubbing against this one. But if you move over to this side, you can see like this one is way closer. So I ex I elongated this one quite a bit to get past this bump and also move the hole out some and. I definitely feel like I have a lot, a lot better return than I did. We'll go ahead and drive it, man. That's the only w really w way you can tell is, is to drive it and see if there's a noticeable change to the actual engine and how uh, the throttle is returning. But yeah, man, overall, I think it uh, turned out pretty good. It wasn't as fast as I wanted to. It's time to get to the gym, guys. I gotta go work out. So I already started sweating. Now I'm really sweating. And I'm gonna go drive Goose, man, because that's what it's all about. Let's go drive the car. So I'm gonna go 
go work out and uh that's gonna be it for right now man you know the few things that i did do i really won't know if it uh, made any difference i'll come back and talk to you guys after i've driven around some and let you know if the bouncing on the uh on the throttle's gone or thr throttle the bouncing has gone on the uh speedo and also if uh if the throttle feels better but talk to you guys a little while Well guys, after a little test drive, coming back from the gym, speedo cable is good. Uh, throttle cable is good too, so the speedo isn't bouncing anymore. You can see that from the uh, from what I uh, videoed, and uh, we're all good. Well guys, it's time to close out the video. <laughs> Might as well do it right here. I'm sitting in my favorite chair in my apartment, about to watch some YouTube before I get back to work on my studying. Gotta take a little break from the study and also going out tonight to hang out with a friend who's celebrating his birthday. Hey, Ivan. Happy birthday, buddy. Who would have thunk that a little bit of oil inside of the Speedo cable would fix a bouncy speedometer needle? It's crazy, man. Those forums are full of information. I hope this guy's, this uh, this helps you out because I would never would have thought of that. Not in a million years. I probably would have replaced that cable a couple of times thinking that I was getting a bad cable, but oil. Oil inside of the Speedo cable. Cool. Also, you see that uh, my uh, my throttle cable is fine. It's uh, returning the way it's supposed to. The little adjustments that I made to those springs made all the difference. So it's idling lower the way it's supposed to. Everything's great. All in all, today we accomplished quite a few things. So that's awesome. Uh, I guess this is how it is when you build a engine that's not original, right? When it's uh, highly modified. You're going to be running into little things that you got to tweak here and there. And that's just what it is. You know, Goose loves the attention. She does. And uh, I, I don't mind giving it to her. So that's it, guys. Once again, thank you for uh, watching the video. Thank you for subscribing. If you have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. You guys have a great weekend. Get out there, work on your cars. Or get out there and uh, watch some more YouTube videos. This is Jason with JW Classic VW. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.